everyone. Welcome. It's great to have you here. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the HBS Live Online Classroom. This is our first piano recital, and we are very excited to have you here. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining today. Um, I, before we get started with this session, I just have a few things to say, just give you a classroom orientation. I'd also like to send a big thank you to Madeline Meehan and the entire Live Online team who's done a lot to get this production ready to go. So, quick classroom orientation for you. What you're viewing me on right now is the live classroom feed. This is curated by our production team. They're hard at work collecting the best views for everyone, so you can sit back and enjoy the entire session today. Um, next, on the right-hand side of that screen, you're going to see your self-view. Please turn on your cameras if you don't have those on already. We would like to have those on for the session. Um, we are also live streaming this session um, on YouTube. And your, just so that you know, um, your, <laughs> your presence and comments may be captured and appear in photos and videos of the Harvard Business School publications and websites. If you wish not to be recorded today, sl select the support button on the upper right-hand side of your screen, and we can help you out with that as well. All right, um, next to your selfie, you've got three buttons there. The first one is the raise your hand icon. Just like in the regular classroom, you can raise your hand to let Lisa know that you have a comment or something to say. Just click on that button, your hand will be raised for about a minute, and it will go away immediately after that. If you'd like to raise your hand again, simply click on that button again to raise it. All right, also you'll have your uh, mute and unmute button there. You can click on the unmute button now if you'd like. We have a production team who's hard at work in there and they will be monitoring all of the sound and audio that's coming through today. So we'd love to hear your applause and any kind of reactions that you have to the music. So you're welcome to stay unmuted today as well. <laughs> There's the team there, thank you. All right, um, a couple other things here before we begin the session. If you are running into any problems with speaking or listening on the platform, make sure you've closed out of other tabs or applications that you may have open. This will greatly improve your connection to the classroom. You can also log out and log back in. That will help as well. Um, if that's not working for you, please click on the support button in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. You'll be taken right to a support team member who can help you out. That's all I have for today. We will begin the session very shortly. Thank you.
Thank you all for being here. Um, hello from Boston, from Harvard Business School Live Online Classroom. Thank you so, so much for being part of this very special event. This is my piano uh, concert, as well as my My Take, which is a tradition at the Harvard Business School. For all of you joining from the live online classroom, I want to say a big hello. We will do more audience interactions later. And for those of you joining from YouTube, hello to you as well. So we're going to, uh, I know that today we have a very special audience. And I know that a lot of you are, are actually not dialing in from Boston, but from all over the world. So we're going to launch a poll. And please type into the poll where you are calling in from today. OK, I see Belgium, Hong Kong, Boston, New York, Georgia, New York City, Hawaii, and Chicago, Williamstown. This is incredible. Thank you so, so much for being here. Um, Valencia, Spain. OK, that's my best friend there from childhood. Hi. <laughs> this is so incredible. I, I just want to say that this is I'm getting emotional already here. Uh, thank you so much for the love and the support and for coming to this special event and carving out precious time out of your schedule. Now, I just did some warm up on the piano. I also want the audience to do a bit of a warm up. So I would invite you to unmute yourself and to join me in saying hello to your fellow audience. I know that we have a global audience calling in from Europe, from Central America, from Asia even. So I just want to make sure that this is a comfortable space for us <coughs> to share our feelings. So if you're ready, once I count to three, please say hello or good morning, good afternoon, good evening in the local language where you're dialing in from today. Are we ready to do this? Once I count to three, please unmute yourself and say hello to your fellow <laughs> audience joining from all over the world. Let's do it. One, two, Three. That's incredible. Thank you, guys. Thank you. And thank you for Abby for hosting Section E for this watch party. I know that a lot of you guys um, are there supporting. Hello. <laughs> thank you so much. Now, out of, the, <laughs> out of the so many languages that you could have chosen, I didn't hear anybody use the language of music. Now, that is what we're going to talk about today. I guess just by a show of hands, how many of you grew up playing classical music? OK, that's a lot of you. And how many of you hated it? <laughs> when you were young, at least. <laughs> OK, I see a few hands. That's great. OK, so when we think of classical music, I guess there's always these uh, associations that we have in our mind. There are some images that jump to you. And I guess there are also words that we associate classical music with. So if I may start this audience interaction by a warm call, Nancy, I saw that you raised your hand. So what is a word that comes to your mind when you think of classical music? Just give me one word. Elegant. Elegant. Thank you. That's great. Um, how about... Irene. I, what, imagination. Imagination. Wow, that's a great word. I love it. How about uh, Fabian? What do you think? Art. Art. Amazing. All right. So when we think of classical music, there are all these different associations that we have. I typically think about the greatest composers of our times or of all times. Mozart, Beethoven, and here's also an image of Musikfeiern in uh, Vienna, which is the Golden Hall of Vienna. And this one is very interesting. I picked this image because a lot of us were subject to, you know, our parents forcing us into playing music. And I recently learned from my partner that this is not a uniquely Asian phenomenon because he's European. So this tiger mom pheno ph phenomenon of tiger parenting, forcing their kids into playing classical music is really hitting very close to home. Um, and we tend to associate classical music with 
the long hours that you spend in front of the piano, the boring practices, and also trying to make equal sound coming out of your five different fingers. Isn't that crazy? Well, for me, I don't know about you, but for me, classical music did not mean joy when I was young. I really hated it. I'm glad that I got back into loving classical music afterwards, but it's definitely not something I consider to be joyful. Now, for those of you who don't really play classical music or music at all, the, the one thing that I often hear my friends say to me is that classical music is really, really hard. If I were to borrow a term from business, the barrier to entry for classical music is really damn high. And you might see from the screen that there are so many notes. It's dizzying. It's like, who knows what it's trying to tell you? And in classical music, there is no word there's no lyrics. You're kind of just down to imagination, as Irene just said. So I guess the, the barriers to entry for classical music is pretty high, and also people feel very intimidated by it. Now, this is very much justified by the little piece of data that I collected from the audience who are attending today. 40% of you said one of these three things. I'm eager to learn, but don't know where to start. Classical music feels intimidating to me. I feel pretty much indifferent about <coughs> classical music. And one last association that we might have with classical music is this aged audience, right? So Nancy, you mentioned elegance. Now, this crowd of audience is definitely elegant. They're beyond elegant. They're very well-dressed, probably older, and also very affluent. So that calls into question of affordability, inclusivity, and also accessibility of classical music. And apparently, this is not the crowd that you would encounter in a musical rave or, you know, alto music festival or a Coachella. It's just fundamentally different. And a lot of us just don't see classical music playing a role in our lives. So it's not surprising that only 24% of the entire audience from the New York Philharmonic are under the age of 40. Now think about that number and think about what it would be in 20 to 30 years. Pretty scary. This is the reason why whenever you see classical music making national headlines, you always see the grand finale of classical music. Lots of newspapers trying to prophesy the death of classical music. <coughs> And it's just really, really hard for someone who loves classical music, which is the 60% of us dialing in from online or joining in the live online classroom today. So I guess every single one of us knows that there is a problem here. Now, the question that I keep coming back to is, what do we do about it? I keep asking myself, is there a way for classical music to resonate, not just with the 60% of us, who would love to be in today's concert, but also for the 40% who are kind of skeptical and not sure whether classical music can fit into their lives. So this is the reason why I created today's concert. I wanted to bring the music to you so that you don't have to travel so far away to see classical music or to experience it. And I want to show you through my own playing and through the music and also the storytelling that you don't have to be a walking encyclopedia of classical music in order to enjoy it, to appreciate it. All you need to do is to accept my invitation, which all of you did, and also to bring your heart and bring your feelings to music. That is all that I require or ask of you today. I want to show you that you can let music be your guide to open your heart for your feelings to come through and to engage with music, not just on an intellectual level, which sounds like analytical and very intimidating, but mostly on an emotional level. And I hope that is what the experience today is going to show you. Now, a few brief words about the program before I start getting back down into business. I have selected four pieces for you and all of them will hopefully evoke different kinds of emotions in you. 
For those of you joining from the live online classroom, you're in for a treat. Now, we're going to launch an audience poll where you get to put down a few words, or even one word, about what, you, what does the music make you hear and make you feel. So very simple questions. What do you hear from the music, and how does it make you feel? For those of you joining from YouTube, we're not lefting, leaving you out. We hope that you're able to replicate the same exercise by doing it on a piece of paper, or to just close your eyes, meditate if you're in bed, um, and just to join us in this very unique musical experience. I encourage you to use this time to be closer to music, to use this time as a blank canvas, just as Irene so greatly pointed out. This is a time for imagination. You're more than welcome to just close your eyes, listen to the music. Who knows what's going to come out of this? And I'll just preface by saying that you'll have a chance to share your thoughts with the audience if you choose to do so later. Now sit back and enjoy.
Thank you so, so much. Um, it was incredible to play in front of such a unique audience. And I actually see, I, I, I hope that you can see what I see now, which is so many beautiful and smiley faces. And I also see your emotions written on the screen, on the cell, the little cell of your, um, of your face. So, okay, so Section E loves you, Lisa. Thank you, Section E. <laughs> I, I see rumination, sentimental, emotional equation balanced from Richard. Kara said it's a soothing and relaxing experience. Fabian says it's uplifting. Great. Donald said it's the end of a very hectic day. Wow, bravo. That's a great sort of phrase to end on because we're kind of nearing our days in Boston as well as in Europe now. Um, I guess, is anybody dying to share like your emotions when you heard this piece? Anybody who wants to volunteer to share with your fellow audience? You can raise your hand, the virtual hand. OK, I'm not going to pick on anybody, but, um, but thank you so much for these beautiful reactions. Um, I just can't wait to see more of this coming. Now, I want to introduce to you um, a very special guest for this piano concert. Her name is Maddie, and I know her aunt, her proud aunt, is actually in this concert on the live online classroom wall. Um, and she is waving hello. Thank you so much for being here, Margot. Um, I want to introduce... <laughs> Thank you. Now, I want to introduce to you Maddie, who is my favorite cellist at HBS and she is classically trained, uh, went to the Juilliard School and a fantastic musician. Today we have two pieces for you on the piano as well as the cello and uh, I'm not going to tell you the piece uh, or about anything that's jargon related. We're just gonna do this exercise one more time. This time we're not going to have any audience polls open but you're welcome to jot down however you're feeling when you hear this music. And my hope is that these two pieces will invoke different emotions in you, and it'll be a very different style and contrast to the two pieces that I just performed. Now let's welcome to the stage, Maddie Tucker. Hey, Maddie. Welcome, Maddie. Now we're just going to do a moment of uh, tuning. So for, you, for those of you who don't know what tuning is, is this uh, really interesting dynamic between two instruments, in this case piano and the cello. I'm going to play an A on the piano, and then Maddie will figure out her magical things on the cello.
Got to talk.
a round of applause to Maddie. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for this beautiful experience. I, I was playing with uh, Maddie. We were rehearsing a couple of weeks ago, and there was this one time when I felt so emotional that after we played meditation together, I had some tears in my eyes. It's just such a moving experience to be able to be in dialogue with another instrument and another human being, to be honest. So thank you so much, Maddie, for this beautiful, beautiful performance. Now, I want to continue into my second portion of my My Take, um, which is about classical music again. Now, I asked you to jot down how you felt, what you saw in music, but I felt like I never told you what classical music means to me, so now is the time to do that. I actually wrote down this portion of my My Take um, in my hands, because I know that the more I rehearse it, the more emotional I get. And this is an audience who I don't want to see me cry in front of. So I'm going to read these words to you. But you should know that this comes from the heart. Now, classical music is my search for meaning and purpose. The reason why I was attracted again and again back to the concert halls is because I wanted to listen to and to uncover the human stories behind classical music that makes my heart beat. In music, I saw the purest form of friendship and human connections. I saw the friendship of two incredibly music talented musicians named Liu Kokman and Jing Wang, flourishing together from the days when they attended the Juilliard School together to sharing the stage and creating the most beautiful melodies. In fact, in this concert, Hong Kong Phil's musical Gift for You in, in 2019, they played meditation, just like the way that me and Maddie performed it just now. In music, I also discovered empathy and empowerment. During Hong Kong Philharmonic's 2019 Easter Community Concert, dedicated to children with special needs, the artistic director actually invited two autistic children to conduct with him on stage together. This was a life-changing moment for me, to say the least, to see the spontaneous clapping from the audience, just like what you guys did, and also the smiles from the faces of every single individual in that concert hall. It made me realize that creativity and also the appreciation of music belong to every single one of us, regardless of our intellectual ability. In music, I also saw family and love. In a very special concert by German-Japanese artist Alice Sarah Ott, she told the story of saying goodbye to her Japanese grandmother who was about to pass away. Alice was on a tour in another part of the world, so she couldn't really see her grandmother for the last time in Japan. She said goodbye to her grandmother by playing the most gorgeous waltz in A minor by Chopin. She said Auf Wiedersehen in German, which also means see you again. For a lot of us who have lost loved ones, this was a moment of tears. Hearing the melodies from her piano, I traveled back in time with my own emotions and reunited with some precious people and some precious memories. Now, all of this informed my own creative journey, trying to bring classical music to where the people are and trying to close the gap that existed between classical music and its audience. I used to play piano at this place called Dignity Kitchen. It is a social enterprise food hall based in Hong Kong that employed people who had different physical abilities. Lots of people came and went, but occasionally, you know, some people do stop by and listen to what I have to offer. So that day, I had the honor to play to a new friend of mine who is a local Cantonese 
and he couldn't see. He was blind. I couldn't really communicate with him because my Cantonese wasn't that great, but the only communications that we had was through music. And he totally just made my day. I also became accustomed to expressing my own emotions, for example, love, through classical music. I still remember the tears in my significant other's eyes when I performed a private concert for his birthday last year. Despite the ups and downs in life, we promise each other to always center on joy. And for the two of us, classical music is that joy. Now, 40 plus concerts and an Instagram account after, you're welcome to follow me, I found meaning, purpose, connections with other human beings, and joy through classical music. And my simplest hope is that you are able to do the same. The good news is, as we've shown you in today's concert, that it doesn't take that much. You didn't need to pay for today's concert. We came to you with the music. But what I'm trying to prove is that you just have to have a willingness to sit in the presence of music, to let it be your guide, to let it move you. Just allow it to enter your world, to touch your heart, and to bring you the all-inspiring beauty of our common humanity. I wanna to finish today by telling you a quote from one of my favorite conductors. He said, only when we're in the presence of beauty can we fully grasp our humanity. What we desire for our lives is that at the end of the day, beauty gets to have the last words. So go out there, be beautiful, be musical. And that is exactly why we're here today. Thank you so, so much. Thank you.
so much for coming. Thank you so much. For Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. You're Thank welcome you. to stay for Thank audience you. Q&A if you so wish. Um, but yes. Thank you so much for making time. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Lisa. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Bye, Katrin. Thank you, Lisa. Hi, Shia. Bye. Hi. Thank you, Section E. Bye. Good to see you again, Lisa. Great to see you, Rolf. Thank you. We will get together Lisa, sometime well in Cambridge. Bye -bye. Yes. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Sophia. Lisa, that was amazing. Thank you, Donod. May I ask, what are your plans after HBS? That's a great question. Uh, I'm going to, the only thing I know is that I'll, I'll be moving to the West Coast to join my significant other. Uh, but apart from that, I don't have a lot of clarity. So I hope to involve music in one way or another. Um, but most likely, it's not going to feature very prominently in my professional life uh, right now. Don't let it go. You're a very gifted artist. Thank you so much, Donald. That means a lot. And Lisa? Lisa? Yes. Ralph as and then usual, Tari. <laughs> the playing was elegant as usual. And, and as always, it's a pleasure to watch your hands float and glide, caress over that keyboard. Thank you. Thank you so much Thank for the you. kind words. Thank you. Bye-bye, Lisa. Bye. Tari. Lisa. Lisa. Hey, Lisa. I'm so, I was, I'm so happy that I was able to join. Um, I think we had this conversation before. I used to like play flute like 13 years. And um, just like hearing this just re-inspired like me personally to like pick up my food again. Uh, yeah. So um, really, really great job. I, I did have a question like, um, I'm curious to to like see if we if we had if we shared the same emotion with any of the um, pieces that you that you um, performed. Like I guess there was one called Oblivion. Like how did how did Oblivion make you feel? Great question. I think there is such depth of emotions and expressions in that piece, and I feel sorrow for sure. And there is a lot of struggles in there. So it's like a tornado that kind of just takes you out of nowhere. And it's, it's a very complicated feeling. I know that the music itself doesn't really have a lot of hope or joy contained in it. But I think like, this is just a very wild guess that the composer also wants to in induce like some light and hope in that piece. So I don't have a great answer for you, but I know that it's a it's such a emotionally rich piece that sometimes I just have to sit there and after playing I'm like I got to I got to like relax a little bit, you know? Yeah. But yeah. thank you. That was beautiful, Tari. I really hope that you can reconnect with your flute and your music and really can't wait to see what comes out of it. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Tari. Thank you for joining. Hope your new job is great. Yeah, I'm, I'm on it right now. <laughs> <laughs> great. Okay, so Nicholas, you were saying something and then Shai. Lisa, you did great and I thank you so much. Thank you very much for the kind words. Thank you for I making the time. You, Harvard Business School. you did a great, great job. I'm really, really impressed. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, and then Shai? Yeah, thank you, Lisa, for the great performance. And just a quick question. Is is there, are you, do you plan to do another like kind of live performance in Boston before you, uh, you know, move to the West Coast? I would Coast? love to, yes, I would love to. <laughs> if we have time in the next coming weeks, yes. I would love to do that. Yeah, thank you for asking. Please let us know. Yeah. Yes, will do. I really think the in-person experience will be so much better because I, I almost cried um, upon that time when I was rehearsing with, uh, with Maddie. So thank you for bringing that up. I'll plan something for y'all. 
Thank you. And Joseph. Yeah, sorry, I, I had this, the same question that someone asked before. If you do do another live performance, would it be posted on your social media so we can follow it? Uh, I hope so, yes. <laughs> Thank you. And finally, we have Fabs. Thank you. I wanted to ask what artist or piece is next on your list? Oh, that's a hard one. Um, I would very much like to tackle Liz because he has incredibly huge hands. My hands are big, but they're not like so huge, you know? So I gotta work on my ranges. And I guess you can never run out of Chopin, you know? Like there are so many great Chopin pieces that I wish that I could play and perform for y'all today. Actually, this concert ended a lot faster than I thought it would, um, probably because I wrote something down and just read, but yeah, I would love the opportunity to actually perform a full-length concert. Um, maybe next time it wouldn't be able to reach so many audience because this one is very special. It's, it's virtual, um, but I think it would be a nice opportunity for a lot of people who are locally based to see what an actual classical music concert is like. Great, thank you. And I see Paul, thank you for joining. Any other questions? You Debbie. are probably using HBS brought Neumann microphones into the uh, campus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I Debbie. saw those U87s on, on, on the mic stands, like this is very impressive. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's a feedback for the sound engineering team. <laughs> uh, we have a question from Debbie. Right, my question was, um, do you usually how do you usually split between solo and chamber i i actually play only chamber music myself wow um i you know i originally you know took piano lessons like everybody else having no idea what chamber music was and when i discovered it as an adult i found out that was uh you know that was my calling but uh i can see you're doing both i was just wondering how at this stage in your life do you see the right balance for you uh you know between the two that's incredible. Uh, thank you for sharing, Debbie. I don't really have um, a lot of preferences. I basically just, how can I say? I'm just guided by the music. If I love the music, then I find somebody who can play it and play it together. And I think that HBS is such a unique place where you have so many talented musicians. So I'm not sure if I'll be able to have the same if I move to the West Coast. So this is a very special opportunity for me to just reconnect with some of the musical past that I had. Yeah, but, but I would really encourage you to continue your practices because it's, well, it's really beautiful I, to I, hear that. I play all the time. I actually play uh, multiple days a week. That's um, incredible. And, and a very important part of my life. It's something I didn't have access to for a lot of my life. So oh, wow. now that I'm older, you know, I don't miss it. <laughs> it happens regularly all the time. Yes. I play, again, I, I play even through the pandemic. Like I have a violin partner. That was the only person I had in my house for the pandemic. That's that was great. It. You know, I got rid of housekeeping, everything else, but I still, the violinist, <laughs> we masked. And you know, you, you can stay apart and still play, right? I learned to play online, um, you know, because that was something else I'd never dreamed of doing because like you, I want to do everything in person. Well, it wasn't possible, was it? Yeah. Uh, I've been, when you're doing only chamber music. So I said yes. I got all the setup with the microphones and all the stuff. And, uh, and actually I made a new uh, viola friend doing that, so. Amazing, that's great. That's, I think, uh, you know, what you're saying and how I feel about it is pretty similar, which is, you just wait for those opportunities to show up. And if you go with them, you can't believe the places you'll go. You can't believe the music you'll meet. And, and that's part of why I like chamber exactly. music. That no yeah. one, uh, almost no one ever says, well, what do you want to play? They say, I want to play this. Can you do it? And, yeah. uh, and I've made uh, it a career of saying yes. That's great. Whatever it is. Always say yes. <laughs> Always yes. Yeah. Thank you yeah. so much, I, Debbie. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. Lisa, do you know if there is a group or community that's been created for HBS alumni that are either um, musicians or 
in the industry or I, I'm not aware of anything. Are you? I am not either. I would love to have such a community, actually. Yeah. Well, let's start it. <laughs> yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah. Donna, do you work for HBS? Uh, I do not, no. I work okay. for, uh, we do music and sound for advertising and scoring. And Incredible. Yeah. How did you find out about today's concert? Oh, boy. Uh, through a Harvard bulletin. Um, oh, wow. I happened to notice the the ad in the bulletin and I that's awesome oh, yeah and yeah, this is this is really awesome um thank you th thank, thank you i know what the, what what the commitment of time was for you to put this together and <laughs> kudos to the technical team too this was yes. a flawless flawless performance this was amazing yeah i have everything to thank the entire team here and control room Thank you so much. This is incredible. I know that we only have four audiences left, but round of applause for all of you for making this possible. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And if the engineers back there are looking for an application for, um, for music, look at Audio Movers. Um, Audio Movers is a phenomenal platform. Um, we use it, and it's... Great starting to become the de facto standard for awesome um, bi-directional music yeah great all right i guess that's it thank you so much for staying till the end thank you, thank you. i'll see you around <laughs> bye 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 bye, bye nicholas oh, i'm so